around the world on Palm Sunday. Processions of events occur in so many different places and cultures as we open up the events of Holy Week. There's no more important week in the whole Christian calendar. We're journeying with Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. That, of course, is what it's about as he leaves the place where he's spent the night, goes down that Kidron Valley and into the city. We're conscious of what lies ahead in terms of suffering. You can't enter the, the, the events of Palm Sunday without thinking of what lies ahead because it is a way of sorrow. It is a way of suffering. I've chosen not to refer directly to the gospel narrative today that speaks of the events of that highly important day as Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, but I focus on Paul's marvellous poem or song in Philippians chapter 2. It's a prayer that explores the heights and plums the depths of Jesus' ministry and how he entered our human experience and made himself as nothing. Let me read to you from Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 5 through to verse 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You see, one of the great things in that passage for me is that he did not use his power to his own advantage. Oh, how often do we see that in so many aspects of society? It's there quite clearly in verse 6. He didn't use it for his own advantage. People often talk in life about getting breaks and making things work for them. Jesus came into that city. He didn't come in there to use it for public acclaim. He didn't come into the city to make himself higher than anybody else. He came into that city in a very different kind of way. Rather instead, or by choice, we might say, he took on the nature of a servant. Now, I don't know what's in your mind when I use a word like servant, but I think it defines so much of the ministry of Jesus. He is one who serves. And when he comes into that city, his serving nature will be seen in all the events that lie ahead. And nowhere will it be seen more than when he dies on the cross. Yet in a way that will make sense. Within a week, we will know that God exalted him to the highest place. So you have this picture that he who is the, the, the God Almighty, who has made himself known in Jesus Christ, has come and become part of our humanity. And yet somehow, God raises him and lifts him to the highest place, not to be better than, not to be standing out above all others, but to be one who is able to call us. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. I think that it's a very interesting thought, this, but when I read scripture, when I read about the name of Jesus Christ, I know I'm reading something very special. And his name is the name that is above every name. Higher than mine, higher than yours, higher than all those who might want to have a claim and position in this world. When Jesus came into that city, we're told that people responded to him and received him. And it was a very, very uh, responsive crowd that, that took their jackets and coats off and tore palm branches and lay them on the ground, that Jesus, when he came into that city, would be seen and recognised and known as the king of all kings. However, that king is humble. He comes in all humility. And the challenge that I find on Palm Sunday is to imagine how Jesus, who comes in this way and is recognised by certainly those in the crowds within a very short period of time, should be rejected and should be crucified. For the cross itself, you could say, is God being raised up high. 
tells us elsewhere in the gospel that he will lift him high. And, uh, and that lifting of Jesus Christ will make it possible for him to draw all people to himself. It's a marvellous truth, isn't it? Martin Luther reminded us, look at Christ. He rides not upon a horse, which is a steed of war. He comes not with appalling pomp and power, but sits upon the, an ass. I mean, it's a very opposite of what you might expect. A donkey is not seen as a, a sign of ridicule, but a sign of humility. And he comes on the back of a donkey into that city. It was prepared for in the intention of God in Christ. Disciples had to go and sort the arrangements out. And when he comes in, they don't see one that they're all cheering for because he's better than others, but they see one that they recognize is coming into his city, his time, his moment. And when he comes to the cross, as surely he will through this week, we will remember it. When he comes to the cross, we see him lifted high. And when he's lifted high, he's lifted high for me, he's lifted high for you, that we might truly know that he is the son of God, the one who loves us to the very end and loves his own. This love that's his is now seeing his love in all its fullness.